Hello and welcome to the second basic level video presentation of the Entrepreneurship and Corporate Entrepreneurship module. I'm Henry Scott from the National Documentation Centre in Athens. In the previous basic level video, you had the opportunity to uh, look over various types of business model. Now we might ask ourselves, with all these various business model possibilities, is there a strategy we can follow that can effectively map out our business idea? Well, yes, it's the diagram known as the business model canvas. And here you'll see it's made up of nine interrelated building blocks. That is nine considerations that you need to make if you want to try and turn your idea into a viable business proposition. The nine blocks are customer segments, which target groups make up your customers, value proposition, what am I offering each customer segment, the distribution and communication channel, how do I reach out to each of those customer segments, the customer relationships, how will my customer relationships develop over time, uh, the revenue streams, how can I earn revenue, the key resources, what assets are required to run my business, the key activities, what are the important activities or processes involved in my business, the partner network, who are the key partners and suppliers, and of course the cost structure, what are the key costs generated by my business. Together, these address what your business is going to provide, how it is going to provide it, and the money that will be going in and out of the business in the process. We'll now look more closely at each of those building blocks so that you can see how they can be used to map out your business idea. So let us start with the what. Uh, here, the, st the first step is to identify your customer. The next step is to identify what your value proposition is for each of those customer segments. That is to describe the bundle of products or services that create value for a specific customer segment. You must ask yourself two questions here. What value are you delivering to the customer? And which customer needs are you satisfying? The value you're offering may be quantitative. You may be offering more for the same price as a competitor or a cheaper unit price, or it may be qualitative. Your innovation might offer more functionality or perhaps it's more customizable. Or perhaps it has a better or more efficient or aesthetic design. Once you've identified the customer segments you are targeting and the value that you're offering each customer segment, then you need to consider the distribution channels that you will need in order to communicate with and reach your customer segments in order to deliver your value proposition. Here, the key questions you need to ask yourself are through which channels are my customers reached? How can I integrate these channels? And what measures define which channels work best? By addressing these questions, you will have a better understanding of how you will raise awareness of the products or services, how your customers can evaluate your value proposition, how customers can purchase your value proposition, and how your value proposition will be delivered, and any post-purchase customer support that you might want to provide. At this point, you will be ready to think about how you will manage your customer relations, or more specifically, the types of relations that your business will want to establish with specific customer segments. There are clear incentives for doing so. A well thought out customer relations strategy will help to acquire new customers, retain existing customers, and sell new products or services to existing customers, otherwise known as upselling. We'll now consider how money will come into your startup business. In the bottom right corner, you will see the revenue streams block. This represents the money that a business generates from each customer segment. Here, you need to ask yourself, what is the value that customers are really willing to pay? 
what do the customers currently pay to your competitors, and how will this change in the future? The answers to these questions will help you to identify the revenue streams most appropriate for your business idea. Revenues broadly fall into one of two types. They're either um, one-time customer payments, such as purchases, or recurring revenues resulting from ongoing payments to either deliver a value proposition to customers, as with subscriptions, and or to provide post-purchase customer support. We note here at the bottom that a profit is generated when your revenues exceed your costs. But, as you may remember from the introductory level, making a profit should not be your underlying concern, but simply a consequence of a well-thought-out business plan. We will now look at how to make your business plan happen. As you can see, the how covers three building blocks, key resources, key activities, and key partnerships. The key resources refer to the most important assets required to make a business model work. These resources need not only be financial or even human, they can, even, they can also be intellectual or physical. These resources can be owned or leased by your business or acquired by your key partners, which we will identify in another building block. The key activities cover the most important things a company must do to make the business model work. These may vary considerably from one company to the next. For example, the key activities of a PC manufacturer, such as Dell, could include production line management and supply chain management. Whereas for a consultancy firm, such as McKinsey, their key activities might include problem solving. Another key activity for many companies with an active presence on the web is a platform or network management. Key partnerships refer to the network of suppliers and partners that are necessary to make your business model work. These partnerships can take different forms and include the following. A strategic alliance between non-competitors or a joint venture where two companies pool resources in order to develop a new business or a simple buyer-supplier relationship or a strategic partnership between competitors, otherwise known as co-opetition. The key question you need to ask yourself here is, what is your motivation for the partnership? To reduce costs, for example, through a new buyer-supplier relationship? Is it to acquire certain resources or activities? Your business can enhance its capabilities by relying on other firms to supply certain resources or perform, perform certain activities. Or perhaps is it to reduce risk and uncertainty? For example, your business may need to hire specific expertise to reduce the risk of making uninformed decisions in the development of your value proposition. And this brings us to the final consideration in the business model canvas. The money out building block. Here we need to consider the cost structure of your business model. This covers all the various costs that you would incur if you implemented your business model. Creating and delivering value, maintaining customer relationships, and generating revenue all incur costs. Fortunately, once you have defined the key resources, the key activities, and the key partnerships, these costs can be calculated relatively easily. Business cost structures tend to fall into one of two categories. Cost-driven business models focus on minimizing costs wherever possible. They aim to create and maintain the leanest possible cost structure using low price value propositions, maximum automation, and extensive outsourcing. Whereas value-driven companies are less concerned about the cost implications and instead focus on value creation. They usually involve premium, i.e. fee-paying value propositions, and a high degree of personalized service. This was a quick overview of the nine building blocks that make up the business model canvas. Now I invite you to check your understanding of the business model canvas with the basic quiz too. Thank you.